Yeah. Please welcome Farrah Fawcett. What are all those for? Of course, it's a very Christian today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got them everywhere. Well, not everywhere. Well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, tell me about Margaret's life. What was it that attracted you to doing this role? <laughs> so cute. <laughs> okay, I'll be serious. What attracted me to this role was fair one who called me cute. <laughs> Retiring. Good night. Thank you. Um, she was such a dynamic. <laughs> it started with the tough question. <laughs> she was um, so dynamic, you mm -hmm. know, and um, so gifted. And she had this desire to record history, and nothing got in her way. She was just blessed with a gift, you know, the way she saw things, the shape of things. Is there any element of her personality and yours? Because she was a very dangerous, or, you know, you know, her life was very, she did some things that could have gotten her killed. Yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, when we were filming and I kept saying, she did this, <laughs> she did this. Yeah. Um, well, uh, she was very physical, you know, and um, I am too. I think she was very feminine uh on the other hand you know yeah. besides being physical and um she was a professional you have to you have to consider this was in the 30s and the 40s so yeah. for a woman then to do it you know and not stay at home and not i mean when she went to get the job at life magazine they'd never had a female photographer so it was really a big deal then and the first picture that ever appeared on life was hers her cover right? yes yeah. yeah do you know anything about photography well, um, I majored in art at the University of Texas, so I, I took a course, and I thought I did <laughs> before I did this. And I said, I think I could, you know, I know the shutter, the lens, I know how to load. And then they brought up these antique cameras, you know, which are wooden and weigh about 35 or 40 pounds. And I had to lug this around all day. So I, I knew nothing, as it turned out. But I thought, also, I've been on the other side. You know, I've been photographed so much. I'll just, I'll think of this. But... It sort of all goes when you kind of start filming, you know. Yeah. Does it, do, do photographers drive you crazy? Which ones? <laughs> Some of yeah. them do. <laughs> I mean, because you're one of the, probably the most, one of the most photographed women in Hollywood over the last decade, you know? Yes. Sometimes they do, you know, when, when I don't want to be photographed, it's a problem. Yeah. But so you uh, probably I, have to... I have a, a tr tremendous amount of respect for them now, much yeah. more so than I did before. No. In, in what sense? Well, before I realized, you know, that the difficulty in getting a photograph, not just, just a person, but, you know, you could put us all in front of a building and say, photograph the building, and we'd all have a different, you know, perspective. And, and it's just a lot... That goes with it. I mean, knowing how to develop your own film, and and the reason that we I wanted that clip is because she was such a pioneer in terms of nobody had really photographed inside a steel mill before, and it was impossible to shoot. And the first photograph that came out, there was there was no difference in the shot. I mean, everything was sort of shadows. So she's the one who took, had the idea to take the flare in and shoot with the flare. And she was very inventive throughout her career with you know new new things dealing with photography yeah that's interesting terribly um, terribly yeah, interesting. Terrible. um let me ask you about Farrah. okay uh, <laughs> how's how's your personal life you you have a a four-year-old how old four-year-old yeah. yes how's the baby hi redmond maybe he's watching yeah. he's wonderful he's uh brilliant he's fabulous i mean you know i'm his mother he <laughs> i think he's wonderful <laughs> um but he's very special and and has made my life much more fulfilled mm -hmm. when are you going to get married oh god <laughs> <laughs> not that you need to but i always wondered sometimes um yeah i, I mm -hmm. guess you know I, I guess at some point you probably thought about it but i i wonder why you never decided to do that. I mean, you got the kid, you got a successful relationship, and you never decided to get married. Oh, it seems like a tremendous effort, you know, 
putting it together, where will it be, who will be there, who I'd will like we to come. manage? I'd like to come. Everybody should come. We yeah. just go. <laughs> you know, I, every once in a while I'll be in Paris or someplace, and I'll say, this is where we should do it. And Ryan wants to do it, you know, like it, well, the next time Mike Tyson's fighting, okay? That's his <laughs> idea of doing it. We go to Vegas, we have a little ceremony, and then we go watch the fight. So yeah. we, <laughs> we've just never been able to put it together. Because it's working. It's working. I'm convinced. Yes. <laughs> I'm convinced. Yeah. You're, you're happy, and mm -hmm. that's what's important. We're going to take a quick commercial to make my uh, sponsors happy, and then we'll come back and talk more with Farrah Fossil. Do something light. A comedy. Be a romantic comedy. Really? Have you ever done comedy? No, but my mother thinks I'm very funny. Is that good? Your yeah. mother thinks you're funny. Yeah, I, I think my they're the good barometer. My mother says, why don't you do that? When you're... Well, I said, they won't let me. So, yeah. it's something silly and funny. You should do a comedy. Have people been sending you comedy roles? or? No. Really? <laughs> no, not at all. They send me heavy drama, sort of things with social issues. You know, the last thing that you do that, that um, is a success mm -hmm. is basically what they send you. In a sense, the kind of things they send you are a compliment because, mm -hmm. um, you know, after, after Charlie's Angels, you could have been easily pigeonholed into a certain thing, and the respect factor for your acting now is, is incredible, the way you've turned your career around and everything. And, and I think it's a compliment, the stuff you're getting. Thank you. Yes, but, um, it is. It is. It's nice to, um, to be rewarded like that, be able to do, to do good work. Yeah. Know? I shouldn't, I shouldn't get in your business like this, but when I look at you, like right here, I can't believe in February you turned 42. I did. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. How do you stay so young? Tell me something, because I look 69 oh, and, no, and I'm you scared, don't. you know? How old are you? I'm 30. Oh, you're a little baby. Baby. living, I think. Um, jeans, you know, my parents probably. I yeah. owe it to them to say. What did your parents do? My mother's a housewife. Mm -hmm. And my father uh, was an oil field contractor, worked on pipelines in Texas. Mm -hmm. So you were born and brought up in Texas? Mm -hmm. yeah. How'd you get out here? Oh, um, I went to the University of Texas and, uh, so boring. <laughs> no, no. And You'd be I surprised. was most beautiful. People okay. want to know I about was the, one of the most beautiful there. And I mean, uh, no, I wasn't, but that's what they said I was. <laughs> I was elected that. Yeah. And um, a publicist from out here saw my photograph and started calling me. This was when I was a freshman. It was funny. I lived in a dorm, and uh, you know they would come running down the hall. Farrah Hollywood's calling. I said, "Stop it!" So I said, "Is not." And so we carried on this conversation back and forth for about three years. And finally, the end of my junior year, I came out. My parents brought me out, and um, I moved into the Hollywood Studio Club. Have you ever heard of it? It's mm. where Marilyn Monroe lived. <laughs> Lots of them. Um, yeah, it's one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll throw one I at you and you tell me yes or Meryl no. Uh, Street, Betty Davis. Uh, yes, Betty Davis, Catherine Hepburn. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to do um, something like Carol Lombard. I thought she had a great career. It was romantic and dramatic and she was funny at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, you should write your own comedy. Well, if I could write, I would. <laughs> well, you could, you could write the treatment, like put yourself in a particular situation. Oh, I, I'm so unimaginative that way. Oh, no. No, I, I am. No, I just really this am. jacket with all these crosses on it tells me that you have ideas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let me see. You know, I've tried. I've tried to develop some things for myself, and I don't know. It just has never worked out. What do you like to do? What do you like to do for fun, like when you're just having a good time? I like to, um... Exercise. I mean, play racquetball, mm -hmm. tennis, or workout, or um, I paint and sculpt. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a nice day for me. I love to go to the movies. I love yeah. to play with Redmond. Okay, we take the racquetball concept. We get the director of the first Rocky movie and yeah. a lady who's the greatest racquetball player to ever live. <laughs> that's right. She's yeah. 42. She was great when she was young. Yeah. And... Already, I don't like it already. <laughs> <laughs> But she's making a comeback. She wants to make a comeback no. against Bobby Riggs or somebody. Right. And uh, she's like, Ryan, 
Brian! You know, uh, Close. He could be the coach. He could have a love affair. Yeah. Yeah. Do, no, but... do you uh, ever think about working with him? Do you... Oh, yes. We, we, we'd love to work together. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. A comedy with you and he mm -hmm. would be uh, very, very interesting. Yes. I'm going to write something because I'd like I to do, see you two together. Do. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad yes. everything's going real good, though. Yes. And yes. thank you for coming to oh, visit. Thank you. This was painless. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Farrah Fawcett.